I want to tell you about a journey that I'm on. This is a journey that started a number Breathe. Hello. <laughs> is that, should I leave this on? Is this on? Okay, we're going to start again. <laughs> we're just going to be in the moment. <laughs> Thank you. Today, I want to tell you a story that's about my journey that started a number of years ago. It's a journey that transformed my life in every way. I learned that you never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Have you ever heard the story of the boiling frog? If you take a pot of hot boiling water and you throw a frog in the pot, that frog's going to jump right out. But if you put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly turn up the heat, that frog will never leave the pot. He won't even notice the change that's going on around him, and eventually he will die. Well, I didn't realize it at the time, but when my 79-year-old mother-in-law came to live with my husband and I, I was the frog. I'd been married to my best friend for 18 years, just finished my MBA, was working as the executive director in a law firm, and I had excellent health. Craig and I had a dream of opening up an executive coaching and business consulting practice, and we were back in school working on our next career move. Financially, we were where we wanted to be. But as Mabel's health began to fail, she was no longer able to take care of her home, both physically and financially. So we invited her to come and live with us. Now, when I was growing up, my grandmother lived with us, so this was an easy decision. I had no real concerns. This is just what we do as a family. But very quickly, Mabel's dependency on us kicked in. She loved having people take care of her. This is what her husband did for her for 60 years of their marriage. So Craig and I picked up right where he left off. We had a very independent set of roles as her caregiver, and that meant that we went in separate directions, and we weren't there for each other, to comfort each other at our greatest challenged times, and that meant it was a very lonely journey for both of us. The more that we did for Mabe, the more that she expected. When I couldn't satisfy her, I felt like the failure. I felt like I wasn't enough. I didn't understand. If my parents could do this, why can't I? So I thought if I was just better, then I could make this easy for everyone. But that wasn't true. We didn't set healthy boundaries, and we didn't ask for help until we were so burned out that we could hardly function. Well, one day, I woke up. It was a decade later, and I was the frog. I was in the pot of boiling water with the heat turned up. I'd lost a sense of my own life. My marriage turned into a caregiver's partnership. I was diagnosed with severe Crohn's disease. My husband had prostate cancer, and the passion for our future had diminished. Isolation was a comfortable place for me because it didn't take any energy. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever been there where you have nothing left to give? You can't cry, you can't move, you can't function. That's where I was. I was an empty shell without a spirit. And I really resented the burden of being a caregiver for a decade of my life. Well, I was at a crossroads. I had to get out of the pot of boiling water where the heat was turned up, or I was going to die. In some ways, I felt like I already had. It was out of pure fear and desperation that I began my journey as a mindful caregiver. I had to become aware of what was going on around me and act accordingly. And it was that mindfulness that eventually saved my life. Craig and I began to set boundaries about how we spent our time and energy. At this point, Mabe was in a facility, she was receiving great care, and we didn't need to be there together every day. 
So our step, our first step really, was to separate the schedule and give each other a break. So we alternated days. Then my mom got involved, and she set regular days of visiting so we could stay home together. And friends did the same thing. That mindful ownership of our life was a huge change. We started to make new choices about food. Craig went back to playing golf. I started a daily yoga and daily meditation practice. This was a difficult transition for us. But we had to stay focused because our life depended on it. Eventually, Craig's cancer and my Crohn's went into remission. As far as our marriage, we know we can't go back 12 years and get a do-over. But we take forward that enormity of what we went through together to rebuild our relationship today. Like all caregivers, we tapped in to the strength and compassion in our soul to take care of Mabe. We learned as caregivers a part of the journey includes the grieving process, the healing, and the recovery. Mabel died in December of 2013. And even though we're still going through this process, I can tell you that people will ask us, knowing what you know, would you do this again? And I always say, of course I would. This is what we do as a family. Next time, I would just do it differently. I would mindfully leap out of the pot before that water boiled over. Thank you.